I spent 15 years struggling with cystic acne along my jawline, my chin, forehead acne, acne on my neck. I tried absolutely everything, topical creams, random supplements, until I finally figured out how to clear my acne naturally from the inside out and got control over my cystic acne naturally. If you've been trying to clear your acne with traditional methods like going to the dermatologist or naturally for an extended period of time, we're talking two to three to four to five to 10 years, and you feel like there's an imbalance that you just haven't been able to identify, you feel like you just can't get to the root of the issue, I want you to know that you can clear your acne naturally from the inside out based on specific strategies grounded in science and evidence, because I did it and you can too. Let's go. Hi there, my name is Jill Therese and after 15 years of acne struggles, I finally cleared my skin naturally and created my acne clearing program, The Clear Code, to help you do the same. 10 years and thousands of clients later, I've made it my life's work to get you clear skin without harsh chemicals, pills, and or creams. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Before I share more about my journey to clear skin for life, I wanna talk about the things that didn't work for me because I have a feeling you have tried one to two to three to 10 of these things too. I started my acne journey when I was around well, I first started breaking out when I was nine years old. Yes, yes. But that being said, I didn't start to address my acne challenges until I was around 13 or 14. I had really bad periods. That was ultimately what led me to, down the path that I kind of started on. I had really bad periods. My acne would come and go throughout my cycle, but there were a lot of other people who had acne, right? I was a teenager. I didn't feel so alone and isolated the way I did once I got older with my skin. But because my periods were so bad and because this was quite a while ago, the doctors thought, hey, let's just put her on the birth control pill and see how her skin does and hopefully it'll help regulate her periods. That being said, the birth control pill, probably like for you, actually did work kind of well. I, from a skin perspective, it cleared my acne pretty quickly. However, it gave me crazy side effects like weight gain, mood swings. Overall, these would grow and I don't, I, they're fine the way they are, but it was painful, right? I had bad PMS still. It made me constipated. There were all these other side effects that I just couldn't live with. So unfortunately I would go off, right? I would be on it maybe a month, two months, three months until the symptoms, these kind of side effects really drove me crazy. And then I would come off and my skin would be pretty good for about a month. And then month two, three, four, five, six would come. My skin would get worse and worse and worse until I couldn't take my acne anymore. Does this sound familiar comment? Yes. if this is your experience too on the birth control pill and or coming off of it. Then I would buy 5,000 different products, right? Over the 15 years that I struggled with acne, I can guarantee you, I've done the math, I spent well over $22,000 on topicals and or dermatologist appointments or random things that I was trying, right? So I would end up going through this vicious cycle because the topicals wouldn't work. And then out of desperation, I would end up going back on the pill. Now, as I got into my late teens, I remember the doctors, started to recommend something called doxycycline, so an oral antibiotic. And they said, this will actually really help. It's gonna be really subtle. You're not gonna notice many side effects at all. It'll be fine. And in my head, I thought, okay, this will be much easier than the pill. I'm not gonna have all of those other side effects. And to be honest, it did help my acne a ton. And I felt like I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, the end of the tunnel, right? I thought, maybe this is gonna be the thing that's actually gonna work for me. However, you can't stay on an oral antibiotic for an extended period of time. Even for me, I ended up staying on that oral antibiotic for an extended period of time, but you have to come off of it at some point. That being said, I didn't know what to expect when I came off doxycycline because my skin had been so great. And I kind of thought that I had cured it or I had fixed it, but little did I know. Within two to three months of coming off of doxycycline, my skin flared up immediately and almost looked ex worse. I was gonna say exactly the same, but I think it was worse than before I went on it, number one. But now number two, I was left with a lifelong challenge of constipation. So I was dealing with chronic constipation. I had acne, I was bloated, and essentially was dealing with so many more side effects than when I had been when I was 14. So fast forward those three to five to seven to 10 years now. Again, I got my acne when I was nine. I started to treat it with the birth control pill around 14-ish. Then around 18-ish, we decided to go with doxycycline and you're going on and off all of these things and you start to literally lose your mind because nothing is working. You're getting terrible side effects in the meantime and you're spending tens of thousands of dollars on topicals. That being said, as I got into my 15th year of struggling with acne, I had a dermatologist appointment that changed everything for me. 
It was my 15th dermatologist appointment, let's be clear. I definitely went to the dermatologist at least once a year on average for my acne for 15 years. So it was my 15th appointment, right? I'm in my mid twenties and I'm still struggling with acne. So I get an appointment with a dermatologist who's in her mid thirties and it's a woman. And I'm thinking, mm, she's gonna get it. I know she's gonna understand. She's gonna feel my pain. She's gonna feel how miserable acne has been making me for the past 15 years of my life. I know she's gonna get it. So I'm pumped and I'm also committed to doing whatever she said because I had read some good reviews and I thought, okay, she's gonna offer a lot of really great action steps and we're just gonna like get going with this and life is gonna be great. I head into her office for that fateful day, that fateful appointment. I'm pumped. I sit down. I'm going over the list of things because I know I want to tell her everything I've tried. And I know she's going to have the solution, right? I'm 100% committed to whatever she offers. Things have to change. Now I'm in my mid 20s. I've had acne for 15 years. No one else around me has it, right? So I'm there and I'm ready. And she comes in and I start to list off all the things that I had tried. I think we're getting into like an in depth appointment, right? And lo and behold, she does what they have always done, which was she barely listened to me for about 42 seconds or so, then kind of immediately brushed off, brushed me off, maybe looked at my skin a little bit because then she turned around to start to wash her hands in the sink. And she says like over her shoulder, she looks at me over her shoulder kind of like half-heartedly and she's like, I don't know what else to tell you, Jill. You've tried everything. We have this like $500 light treatment that may or may not work for you, but I don't know what else to tell you. And I'm like devastated. Not only is this the 15th doctor, it is also the treatment I'm used to where I'm completely dismissed. She barely listens to me, barely looks at me, offers me something I don't want that is clear, that's too expensive and that isn't gonna work anyways. And I truly remember being like, and all I could think was that, that's all you got. Seriously, that's it. So I declined the light treatment, needless to, stay, needless to say, and I left her doctor's office pretty pissed. I'm pretty sure I was kind of rude to her. I definitely peeled out of the parking lot. They had like gravel, and I remember I peeled out and all the gravel like spewed behind the car. It was very dramatic. And I cried the whole way home, to be honest. I could not, I was really at the end of my rope. And as I was crying, as I was thinking through everything she had said, I was kind of going through the appointment, right? And I kept repeating, you've tried everything. I don't know what else to tell you. You've tried everything. I don't know what else to tell you. And I started to think, I really started to think, because at the time I was becoming a fitness instructor. And so I was learning way more about the body, mind, soul, food connection. And things started to come together in my brain because at every dermatologist appointment I've ever had, I always ask them, do you think that what I'm eating or my family history of blood sugar management, my long-term use of doxycycline, my use of the birth control pill, do you think these things could be contributing to my acne? And every time they would just dismiss me and be like, you're crazy. And I started to wonder though, maybe if they were crazy. And I started to really think about everything I had learned from a food, body, mind, nutrition perspective as it relates to fitness. And I started to think about everything I knew about my skin. And in this Oprah flash of genius aha moment, it was like the light came down on me and I realized. <laughs> I realized that it was my food. I had tried everything. I had tried everything to clear my acne naturally, but adjusting my diet. And I knew in that moment, in that specific moment, that what I was eating, how I was eating was making me break out. And I knew in my bones that how I was eating, what I was eating, my nutrition was deeply impacting my acne. So I get home and I am pumped. And all I can think was now I don't have to use any of these 42,000 different products sitting on my counter and I can throw them all away. And I literally remember I swept them all off my bathroom counter and into the trash because I was done with them. And over the next few weeks, I studied everything I possibly could about the link between food and your acne. And I learned so many things. I learned so much that doctors don't tell us about how the food that we're eating is impacting our skin, our blood sugar management, our digestion, our hormones, how it's all deeply impacted by everything we're doing and all of the action steps that we can take to start to adjust things and impact them positively instead. I realized that I had been applying band-aid solutions to symptoms of a deeper root issue, a deeper problem I was having. So I put together a plan to clear my acne naturally. And in 30 days, literally 30 days, my skin was completely clear and it has been ever since. And that was well over a decade ago. So what was the plan and how did I define it? Let's talk about the parts of this process for me because they're really important and they will help you on your natural acne clearing journey as well. 
The first thing I zeroed in on was what made acne form in the first place, right? I knew that my food was causing it, but I didn't understand how it was linked. And I didn't understand why certain treatments had worked in the past and why certain treatments treatments didn't. The first study I found that explained acne perfectly and led me to where I am today was the study about how and why acne forms in the first place. I read through the study in depth multiple times. I will link to it below. I will not bore you by reading the full study. However, I want to focus on this one part that really changed my entire world as it related to acne. Four key pathogenic processes lead to the formation of acne lesions. Alteration of follicular keratinization that leads to comedones, increase in altered sebum production under androgen control, follicular colonization by P. acnes, and complex inflammatory mechanisms that involve both innate and acquired immunity. Which basically means, in English, the reason that acne forms is number one, we have too many skin cells at the pore. Number two, we have too much oil at the pore. Number three, skin cells don't slough off the way they should. And then number four, P. acnes, a bacteria, gets into the pore and makes a breakout form. That is why we break out. And all I could think as I learned about this information was, okay, how am I eating in a way that is impacting these conditions at the poor? Because it's universally agreed upon at this point that what we eat, our diet, our nutrition, et cetera, impacts our brain, our eyes, our lungs, our heart, our digestion, our reproductive organs. So of course what we're eating impacts our skin. And that's, I think, the biggest fallacy that I had been told my whole life. It was that what you're eating isn't impacting your skin, when of course it was. So I wanted to understand what I was eating, how I was eating, and how I was eating what to cause these conditions at the pore. I went deep down the rabbit hole of research and also became a certified nutrition consultant with over 900 hours of study devoted to healing the body naturally with food to figure out how and why these conditions were presenting themselves so that I could clear my acne from the inside out. The first pore condition that I really focused on exploring and understanding deeply was the first part of the process, the alteration of follicular keratinization element, aka you just have too many skin cells at the, the pore. And I realized that this was linked perfectly to blood sugar management. One key quote, or rather a few, that I'll share a little bit with you, and I'll link to the studies below, basically outlined how higher levels of sugar in the bloodstream and or higher levels of insulin can deeply impact skin cell growth at the pore. Diets based on products with a high glycemic index lead to hyperinsulinemia. Elevated insulin levels stimulate the secretion of androgens and cause an increased production of sebum, which plays a fundamental role. Hyperinsulinemia affects the level of circulating IGF-1 and insulin growth factor binding protein which directly affects keratinocyte proliferation and apoptosis. In hyperinsulinemia, the level of IGF-1 increases, whereas the level of IGF-BP3 decreases, which leads to an imbalance. And as a result, keratinocyte proliferation increases. So that's a lot. Basically, it states that when and if you are experiencing potentially high insulin levels due to high blood sugar levels in your bloodstream, you may be experiencing excess skin cell growth at the pore. Now, that being said, as I dove into this research, I realized how blood sugar is truly managed and truly impacted and not just partially impacted. So much of us believe that if we just remove sugar for an extended period of time, for example, our skin will be fine. Or we kind of go on these like crash diets where we remove a ton of things or we intermittent fast, right? And we think that these things are going to fix the challenge when in fact they actually make it worse, especially in the short term. In terms of the second factor, the too much oil at the pore that's contributing to acne breakouts, I started to understand how this increased level of sebum at the pore, so too much oil, oil equals sebum, linked back to an increase in androgens, stress hormones, and then we're also impacted by blood sugar management as well. I saw a link between my stress and my acne. I knew that there was one. I knew that that at certain points I would break out more when I was stressed out a lot and other points when I was calm, I wouldn't, but I couldn't always define exactly when, how, or why, and or what to do about it. As I studied the final two conditions at the pore that led to a breakout, the impaired skin cell sloughing off and the P. acnes getting in, I realized why a lot of the treatments for acne existed in the world. <laughs> a lot of the treatments that were traditionally used to address acne focused on those last two conditions, the desquamation and the P. acnes. Think benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, tretinoin. All of those either impact 
the desquamation process, so they increase skin cell turnover, or they're trying to treat the infection at the pore level. So they're trying to kill P. acnes, for example, the bacteria that causes acne. The birth control pill also impacts this part of the process because it can lead to temporarily decreased levels of sebum at the pore level. When you're taking the birth control pill, you are most likely and are commonly known to have suppressed levels of testosterone, for example. Testosterone is an androgen that can increase sebum levels at the pore. And when you're on the birth control pill, it can lower testosterone levels, kind of artificially, right? And only temporarily. So. I finally started to understand why the majority of the acne treatment plans out there weren't addressing the root of the issue. They were only kind of addressing symptoms of the problem and or one of the conditions at the pore. So for example, let's say you lower oil levels that can dramatically impact things. But if you lower oil levels just temporarily with a pill that you can't take for life, what happens when you come off that pill? And or if you're using a topical cream that helps to support your skin cells sloughing off effectively, but you have to stop the cream for any reason, number one, and or you still have the other conditions at the pore, you're most likely still going to be struggling with acne. All of the common treatments that I have tried to clear my acne, think benzoaproxide, salicylic acid, tretinoin, the birth control pill, were temporary band-aid fixes that once I stopped, would immediately lead to an increase in breakouts and or were only going to work temporarily anyways. So what did I do next? After I understood why we're breaking out in the first place and what did I do to clear my acne naturally? I defined my root acne triggers. I dove deep into my body. I dove deep into my genetics, my medical history, my period history, my gut health issues. I looked at when I broke out, when I didn't, the topicals that I was using. I looked at everything. I knew that I had been on and off the birth control pill for years at a time. I knew that topical treatments often worked for a little bit and then they would stop. I knew that I was chronically constipated. I knew that I had a really intense sweet tooth. I knew that I had bad PMS, that I would break out the most mid-cycle and pre-period. I just needed a way to pull them all together. And combined with my experience, my now nutrition education, and my understanding of my body, my skin, root acne triggers in general, the poor conditions, what led to acne in the first place, I was able to define my root acne triggers very clearly. I have a root acne triggers quiz for you to get started on this yourself. So feel free to check below for the link for that. That being said, I knew I was dealing with blood sugar management challenges. I knew that I was dealing with gut health challenges, probably in imbalance of types of bacteria in my gut. I probably had the wrong types of bacteria. And I also wasn't able to absorb nutrients efficiently, even if I was eating the right foods for myself. I also knew that I was struggling with estrogen dominance. So that mid-cycle, pre-period stuff, bad PMS, moodiness, constipation, all the things, they were all signs of estrogen dominance for me. And once I started to address these four factors that were the core of my root acne triggers in a personalized and customized way, I knew that the action plan I defined would lead me to clear skin for life. So let's discuss the four action steps I took to clear my acne naturally from the inside out and keep it clear for life. The first action step that I took that's actually very important, it's not really linked to the four root triggers, is I took a picture of my skin in very clear, open daylight so that I could objective, objectively assess my skin. If and when you are relying on anything less than objectivity when you are beginning to clear your acne naturally from the inside out, you will have some trouble, my love, because what happens is when you start to clear your skin, you will get scarring and it'll be really difficult to know what's if and whether or not you're making progress, you have to take a picture. So that's action step number one before anything, take really clear lighting in like a good window picture. That's number one. The second action step that I took to start to clear my acne naturally from the inside out was I began to balance my blood sugar naturally over time. I had learned in all of my work experience education that blood sugar management was a long game, okay? When you look at any assessment of blood sugar management to get a really clear picture of it, you kind of, you, there's a bunch of different ways. The first way you can look at it is fasting glucose level. So like what is your blood sugar level when you first wake up in the morning and you haven't eaten anything and you haven't eaten for eight hours, six to eight hours. That's a relatively good indicator, but it's not necessarily gonna give you a full picture. The fuller picture, the better picture is your A1C, which gives you an indication of your blood glucose levels over a period of three months. And that, tells us as well that blood sugar management is very variable throughout the day. 
you have big spikes and falls based on what you're eating, where you are in your cycle, how your digestion is, stress levels, sleep levels, like blood sugar management is a complex process, going back to what I said at the beginning, which is that like your body is a symphony. So I realized that blood sugar management was gonna be a long fix and I wasn't gonna be able to fix it overnight, but if I was really consistent with specific action steps, I could see huge shifts. The first thing I focused on was having a high quality protein and fat with breakfast and I didn't fast and I made sure I had this within 30 minutes of waking. One of the worst things you can do is wake up first thing in the morning, not eat anything, have two to three cups of coffee, go for another six hours and then have like a big plate of pasta at lunch you have just put your blood sugar on a crazy roller coaster. And so all I cared about was having a high quality protein fat for breakfast. And then also after uh, two to three hours every day, I would have a high quality fat or protein for a snack. And then always had chicken, lentil, salmon in my larger meals, so lunch and dinner. This started to positively impact my blood sugar levels over time, which again, started to dramatically impact my skin, but then also helped me feel more balanced emotionally. I didn't have those big spikes and falls of energy or even as big initially, especially. And then over time, it was a much bigger difference, but I didn't have these big shifts in my mood. The third action step I took to begin to clear my acne naturally from the inside out was I started to focus a ton on my gut health. So I was on the birth control pill on and off for a decade, as well as doxycycline, like I mentioned. And even though those may work in the short term, they can set you up for problems for life. Long-term users, or you know, if you've been using the birth control pill for an extended period of time, so three, anything longer than let's say a year, you are going to be more prone to insulin resistance, blood sugar management challenges, and then also from a gut health perspective, leaky gut, which is just a little intestinal permeability, which then can lead to you not being able to absorb nutrients the way you need to chronic constipation, and also just a gut dysbiosis. So having the wrong types of bacteria in your gut. We have three pounds, believe it or not, from here to the other end. And that stuff kind of keeps us alive and keeps us healthy and functioning. And also the better you are digesting things, the better you are going to be able to get rid of excess hormones. We're gonna talk about that in a second. So I knew that my gut was messed up because I was constipated all the time. So the first way I started to address my gut health to support clear skin was I added in a quality probiotic. I had never done this before. My mom, I will give her props, she had told me about probiotics and I did ignore her. And they were hugely impactful for me. I focused on taking one with about 10 billion organisms or more. Don't go for 100 billion organisms right away if you haven't been on probiotics. Don't do that. You can go down. 10 billion organisms or more with lactobacillus, acidophilus, and bifidobacterium were like my chef's kiss. And then I also started focusing on having probiotics in my daily life. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I would have some kombucha. And then maybe every other day, I would have some sauerkraut. I always focused on adding in these high quality probiotic foods with live active cultures, because we actually need those things. So like yogurt, for example, is a very common example of a food that has a live bacterial culture in it. You see it, it's written on the thing, it says live bacterial cultures. That's good for you. Now, before I share the final action step that really supported my acne clearing journey, I wanna share a little caveat. And that is that identifying these root acne triggers can be really challenging, right? And it took me an extended period of time with a lot of education and experience to really understand how all of these things led to clearer skin. And that being said, I know you've done a lot of Google you're probably here because you were searching for this, right? How to clear acne naturally. And I know that that can take so much time, energy, and effort. And that being said, the most important thing you can do before you start any action steps along your acne clearing journey is to define your root acne triggers correctly. The worst thing that you can do is to decide on a plan and then it's based on the wrong premise. So you believe that you have gut health issues and so you decide to do a bunch of things, but that's not actually what it is. You'll end up just being on this constant roller coaster of trying something new, it not working. You getting discouraged. Then you try something new, it doesn't work you get discouraged, right? So it's very important you define your root acne triggers. So I would definitely take the root acne triggers quiz below this video and or if you just want someone to tell you why you're breaking out, if you want help and you want someone else to define your root acne triggers for you, check out my natural acne clearing program, The Clear Code. We go over your root acne triggers, we define action steps to clear your acne naturally over time, and then we create a clear skin lifestyle plan for you. But that being said, more than anything, don't do anything unless you've defined your root acne triggers correctly, okay? Now
Now, back to my fourth action step and the fourth large thing that I did that cleared my acne naturally for life. While addressing my blood sugar management, my gut health, and while starting to address some topical challenges for my skin, I started to realize that there was something missing because I had been on and off the birth control pill so many different times and I could link some period stuff with my skin stuff. And I didn't quite understand it. I knew that when and if I went on and off certain pills, my skin would get better or worse. And certain pills have different levels of hormones. I knew that mid-cycle and pre-period I was breaking out a lot. And that usually like the week of my period, my skin looked fantastic. I knew there were these like certain symptoms and or signs, but I didn't know how to pull them all together. That being said, after a ton of research on periods, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, and how they impacted our skin, mind, body, soul, I realized that I was probably struggling with a little bit of estrogen dominance. And one of the best ways to focus on addressing estrogen dominance holistically is by focusing on liver detoxification. Because I had been on and off the birth control pill for so many years, I knew I was probably dealing with sluggish liver challenges. And that means ultimately just I had an inability to detoxify out excess estrogens, testosterone, and or just any other toxins hanging out in my body. Also because I was chronically constipated, that didn't help a dang thing. So I needed to support my liver to get rid of excess estrogen, excess testosterone, and or just any other toxins that were causing problems. The biggest action step that I took here that dramatically impacted my skin, I talk about it all the time, I'm sure you've heard me say it, is that I started drinking dandelion tea nightly. It was so wonderful and had such a huge impact on me and my skin. It is an herbal cholagogue, which means it supports bile flow from your liver, which means that ultimately it'll just help you go to the bathroom a little bit better. That was like, I seriously, the night I took it, I remember being a little skeptical and being like, it's just tea, no way. And the next morning I went to the bathroom, I was like, oh, that was easy. And then it continued. And then mid-cycle and pre-period things had shifted for me. I wasn't having the PMS, these kind of crazy inflammatory acne anymore. Everything had started to shift along with all the other action steps. But dandelion tea was incredible. It's a bitter herb. Another bitter herb you can check out that I didn't actually end up using for too long was milk thistle. Same family, same action steps, same theme. It helps support bile flow from your liver, which can help estrogen detoxification. Once I started to implement all of these action steps in a way that worked for me in my life, I saw my skin begin to improve week over week consistently. I also felt all the action steps that I was taking were sustainable. So I could still have some pizza, some donuts, cookies here or there, whatever my little you know thing that I wanted that day. I could always enjoy those things. I also felt like two, I didn't have to remove a ton of foods. So a lot of us feel like we can't touch sugar, dairy, or gluten, and we have to not eat any of those things to keep our skin clear. But this new plan that I had crafted for myself allowed me to have a life and have clear skin. There was also something shocking that happened as it related to my acne clearing journey. And that was that after I came home from the dermatologist appointment, that final one that I mentioned, I threw away all of my topicals. So I literally, I think I kept my moisturizer but that's it. And my whole life for the 15 years that I've been dealing with acne, I thought I was like addicted to topicals, right? I bought every new pill cream, every version of proactive that came out, I would buy. Cause sometimes they would adjust their formulation and I always think, oh, this is gonna be the thing that worked and it never did. So that being said, the fact that I got to throw away all of my topicals, oral antibiotics, everything, and my skin was clearer was shocking to me. That being said, you have to be careful if and when you want to taper off any of your topicals, and that's the keyword taper. You don't wanna stop everything all at once. You wanna slowly come off specifically over time. I don't, <laughs> I think that by the time I went to throw all away my topicals, throw my topicals all away, they had stopped working as they do. But if and when you're on like a 10 to seven, seven, seven to 10 skincare routine currently, pick one, taper off slowly. But that being said, the most shopping, shocking thing about my acne clearing journey is that I barely use skincare now, I know. And I tell people that and they don't believe me, but I barely use topicals. There were so many details that went into clearing my acne naturally, as you can tell, right? But definitely a few key ones stand out to me the most. And the first, the very first, is that I could eat more food and have clearer skin. When you're in a period or a season of high restriction to clear your acne, you feel like you're avoiding everything. You can't touch sugar, dairy, or gluten. And if you eat anything, you're gonna break out. And often what I see as a result is people, clients will remove good foods that they need. And then not only have they removed a ton of food, they become afraid to eat. 
And so even further down the line, they're feeling highly restricted. They're afraid of food. They don't know what to eat. And it's a very difficult experience now eating, which is like the worst. So the first surprising detail for me was that I was able to eat more food. I love pizza. I love me a donut. And I eat those things at least once a week. I am literally going to go on a pizza crawl tonight and my skin will stay clear because I have my clear coat in place. I also felt so much more balanced in my body and my periods became so wonderful and lovely. They became more regular. Everything was really calm. I didn't feel such huge shifts hormonally mid-cycle and pre-period, which was a huge change. And again, I was also able to completely minimize my skincare routine, which meant I spent maybe $150 to $200 a year on my topical routine now, maybe. I actually could probably add more in first than the anti-aging stuff, but I don't, I barely use anything. A few other interesting things started to happen after I cleared my acne naturally. And the first was that it freed up so much mental space. I got to focus on other things. When I woke up first thing in the morning, I didn't touch my face because I was worried about what acne had started overnight. Instead, I popped up, I went and water washed, I would apply some moisturizer slash SPF, not even really looking at my face in the mirror, I was thinking about the rest of my day. I put on some lip gloss, some cute little mascara because you can barely see my eyelashes if I don't, and then I'd leave. I got to focus on the rest of my life. Again, I could focus on eating more. I could go out with friends and I could have pizza, nachos, I don't drink currently, but let's say I drank in the past. I could have a glass of wine and I didn't have to worry about covering up my jawline with my hair the way I would for the majority of my life up until then. And or I didn't sit at the table thinking about and or wondering how everyone around me could eat so badly and still have clear skin. You might do that. I get it. It's cool, but I would do that too. I'd be like, she's eating so poorly. How is her skin beautiful? I don't have to do that anymore. I was also able to finally stop Googling and going down these rabbit holes of potential treatments that worked for other people that I wasn't sure was going to work for me, right? I didn't have to spend so much time on YouTube, the Instagram, TikTok, the internet in general, trying to figure out what was going on with my skin. So I got to focus on other things. I could show up at work more confidently, right? I could present at work and not worry about anyone thinking about my skin. I could actually focus on the content of the presentation. I could go on first dates and feel really confident and actually think about whether or not I like the person I was with as opposed to like what I'm gonna cover up on my face. I finally had the knowledge that I had been missing my whole life about how to clear my acne naturally, keep it clear for life, that finally gave me the control and confidence I had been missing for 15 years. So that being said, everything I shared is very DIYable and I would start with that root acne triggers quiz if I were you and you were interested in learning more. But if you want help pulling it all together, if you have instincts or some hunches about why you're breaking out, but you feel like you've exhausted your Googling powers and or you are just tired of trying random things to fix your acne and you want someone to just tell you what to do. You want someone to define your root acne triggers. You want to know exactly what to do to clear your acne naturally week over week. And then you want to know how to keep your skin clear for life instead of like going on these up and down detox yoga yoga dieting things. Check out my natural acne clearing program, The Clear Code, via the link below. In the program, we define your root acne triggers, define a customized plan to clear your acne naturally, and then we have you follow that plan progressively week over week until your skin is clear, and we have a plan to keep your skin clear for life. So I would love to see if we could help you there. That being said, if you know anyone who is struggling with their acne and they want help with their skin, or they're wondering if there's a deeper root issue at play, please send them this video. I would love to share my journey with them and also be this like spark in the darkness for them, for them to know that you can clear your acne naturally. Thank you for being here and make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video.